Hello, this is Sylvia from i4sbox.com and today we'll look to OES 17 that is standard about leases. Well, currently OES 17 is under major reconsideration, so let me brief you a bit about its development. OES 17 was originally issued in 1982 and it was the first OES standard that applied the concept of substance over form and the present value basis of measurement, well, it means discounting techniques and so on. Well, since 1982, there have been some revisions to OIS 17, however, it remained essentially unchanged for 27 years. Well, we can say that OIS 17 is quite old standard and its principles still apply in the same manner as in 1982. However, there is a great development of IFRSs in the world and as you might know, IFRS and US GAAP converge in order to develop a single set of accounting and reporting principles. And therefore, the old concepts seem to be outdated. So in 2009, International Accounting Standards Board, who issues all IFRS standards, by the way, started project of reconsideration of IS-17. And it means that ISB is in the process of issuing completely new IS-17 standard. So it still hasn't been issued, but I will mention shortly what's going to be about. So, the new IS-17 will make no distinction between operating and finance lease, and that's really huge change. Instead, lessee will recognize an asset that is in fact his right to use the leased asset for the lease term and also a liability to make lease payments. Right to use the asset will be measured at present value of the lease payments and not at fair value, and that's also different from the current standard. Also, lessees and lessors will show the leases differently in the financial statements. Of course, there will be some exceptions, such as operating leases for less than 12 months. Well, that's really the picture of the new IS-17 from the airplane, but I will come back to that when it's issued as the new standard. Now, let's take a look to the current IS-17 and summarize its main principles and requirements. So, what's the lease? Lease is an agreement whereby lessor conveys the right to use an asset for an agreed period of time or lease term to the lessee in return for a payment or series of payments. Well, those payments are called minimum lease payments and in fact, they are the payments over the lease term that the lessee is required to pay to the lessor excluding any cost of services, taxes, and so on. Well, what kinds of leases do we have according to IS-17? There's one basic question to answer before making any lease classification. Are substantially all rewards and risks of ownership of the leased asset transferred to the lessee or not? If yes, then the lease is a finance lease and if not, then the lease is an operating lease. You should answer this question right at the inception of the lease in order to classify the lease correctly, because the whole accounting treatment of this lease basically depends on its classification. Well, luckily, IS-17 states about five basic situations that normally lead to the lease being classified as finance. If only one of those situations happens, then the lease is finance. So what are they? The first, the lease transfers ownership of the asset to the lessee by the end of the lease term. The second one, the lessee has an option to purchase the asset at the price that is expected to be sufficiently lower than fair value at that time. Well, and at the inception of the lease, it's almost sure that the option will be exercised. Third, the lease term is for the major part of the economic life of the asset, even if title is not transferred. Well, IS-17 does not say how much is major part, but US GAAP states 75%, so we can assume something like this. Fourth, at the inception of the lease, present value of the minimum lease payments is to at least substantially all of the fair value of the leased asset. Again, IS-17 does not say how much is at least substantially, but US GAAP sets 90%, so we can see this as guidance. Fifth condition or situation, leased assets are of such specialized nature that only the lessee can use them without major modifications. Now, let's explain how the lessee shall recognize the finance lease. Initially, lessee recognizes the leased asset under his property plan and equipment, and that's the debit side of the entry. In what amount? 
lower of assets fair value and present value of the minimum lease payments. The present value is determined by discounting minimum lease payments with using interest rate implicit in the lease, right? Also, initial direct costs that lessee incurs in relation to the lease are added to the cost of recognized asset, right? That's for the asset part. And what's the credit side of the entry? It's the lease liability, which is in fact some kind of a loan. Here, don't forget to split this liability into current and non-current part because I'm sure that there will be some payments made within 12 months and after 12 months after the reporting date, right? What about subsequent measurement or after initial recognition? Now, we have two things to take care about. First, is the least asset that we must depreciate over its economic life, right? Not over the lease term because that doesn't necessarily need to be the same. So the entry is to debit depreciation expenses in profit or loss. Well, sometimes you debit the cost of another asset, but let's not go into the principles of another IFRSs right now. And the credit side is accumulated depreciation account. Well, this is in line with IS 16 on property plan and equipment, or you can look for some impairment in line with IS 36 too, right? The second thing to take care about is the lease liability or minimum lease payments paid to lessor because we need to allocate them into two parts, reduction of lease liability and finance charge or interest. Then the entry is to debit lease liability and interest expenses in profit or loss and credit cash or bank account, whatever you use to pay your lease payments. But now the question arises how to allocate the payments into repayment of lease liability and finance charge. Well, IS 17 requires maintaining constant periodic grade of interest on the remaining balance of liability during the lease term. Well, in fact, that's the interest rate implicit in the lease. And if you subscribe to my free IFRS course on my webpage, ifrsbox.com, you will learn exactly how to do it. So that's how lessee reports finance lease. And what about lessor? At the inception of the lease, lessor is a finance provider. Therefore, he recognizes lease receivable, and that's the debit side of the entry. The lease receivable is in fact net investment in the lease. And the net investment in the lease is total of minimum lease payments and unguaranteed residual value. Total of these two figures is gross investment in the lease, but careful, we are not done yet because this total must be discounted to present value using interest rate implicit in the lease, right? And all this must be equal to fair value of the leased asset plus initial direct costs. Credit side of the entry is simply cash given out by the lessor. On what about subsequent measurement? That's a little bit easier than lessee, because there's just lease receivable to take care about. Now, we have to split minimum lease payments received from lessee between reduction of finance lease receivable and finance income. And this is really very similar to what lessee would do. Constant periodic rate of return shall be maintained. Now, let's take a look to operating lease, which is much easier. This time, lessee does not recognize any asset. In fact, lessee takes care about his lease payments that are recognized as an expense in profit or loss on some straight line basis or some other pattern that would be more relevant, right? Accounting treatment on the lessor's side is very similar. Lease payments received from the lessee are recognized as revenue in the profit or loss basically on a straight line basis. And let me remind you that Lessor keeps the asset in his own financial statements and depreciates it. Now, let's take a look to sale and leaseback transactions. What is it? That's a transaction in which the seller sells the asset and then he leases the same asset back. Well, in fact, the asset does not move. In this case, seller becomes lessee as he takes the asset back under the lease. Well, the other party of this transaction is lessor, right? The accounting treatment of sale and leaseback strongly depends on the type of the resulting lease. Well, if the resulting lease is a finance lease, then in fact, the whole transaction is a loan that is securitized by the leased asset. 
seller or lessee keeps recognizing the asset in its financial statements and also he starts recognizing finance lease liability and applies the accounting treatment as explained in finance leases. Situation becomes slightly more complicated when resulting lease is operating. In this case, it's necessary to examine whether sales price of an asset was at fair value or not. If the sales price of the asset was close to its fair value, then any profit or loss from sale shall be recognized immediately, right, to profit or loss. If the sales price of asset was below its fair value, then it is necessary to look to rental payments under operating lease. If the rental payments are just about market, then profit or loss on sale of the asset shall be recognized immediately because the sale is just bargain, often done in the case of urgent cash shortage. But if the lower sale price is compensated for by the future lease payments below market price, then profit or loss shall be deferred and amortized in proportion to the lease payments over the period for which the asset is expected to be used. And if the sales price is above fair value, then the excess over fair value shall be deferred and amortized over the period for which the asset is expected to be used. So this was the quick summary of IS 17, but of course there is a lot more stuff to learn. Please visit my website ifrsbox.com. You can even subscribe to the free IFRS course and find more IFRS stuff there. Bye and thanks for watching.